This is chapter 4, titled, Does God Indeed Speak? To everyone, there is usually an initial apprehension or wonder of how the unseen God speaks. Does God have a mouth? With which language does he speak? Mandarin, German, English, or Swahili? When does God speak? Where does he speak so I can go there? How does God speak? You probably have asked one of these questions before, if not recently, perhaps many years ago. Man was created in the image of God. Therefore, if man, the cre cre creature, speaks, then God, the creator, who man mirrors, also speaks. The major challenge we have is how man on this physical earth can hear God, who is a spirit, and cannot be seen with physical eyes. It is easy to relate to a fellow human being whom you see physically and hear speaking to you. God has been speaking since creation, and he continues to speak even today. These are the opening statements in the Bible. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 through 3 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hoovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Then God said, if God said, then God speaks. When God called the children of Israel out of Egypt, he spoke to them through Moses. God desired not only to speak to Israel through Moses, but also to speak to them directly and collectively. God asked the people to prepare themselves to meet him on Mount Sinai. He then came down and spoke to them, making them afraid. And Exodus chapter 20, verse 18 through 19 says, Now all the people witnessed the thundering, the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. Then, say, then they said to Moses, You speak with us, and we will hear you. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Because of the people's re reaction, God spoke to them through Moses, their leader rather than speak with them directly. In the Old Testament of the Bible, God spoke to the people mainly through the prophets. The Jewish tabernacle had three sections. The outer court for the people, the holy place for the priests, and the holy of holies, which only the high priest entered. The holy of holies was where God's presence was, as typified by the Ark of the Covenant and the two cherubs overshadowing the mercy seat. Only the high priest went into the Holy of Holies and communed with God. This principle influenced the setting of the later day synagogues and temples of the Jews. In the temple, a veil shielded the holy place from the Holy of Holies and the people could not see, let alone enter the Holy of Holies. However, something significant happened when Jesus was crucified. Immediately when Jesus gave up the ghost, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, granting people a view of, of and access to the Holy of Holies. And so from the New Testament era, people now have direct ac access to God and to God's voice. However, this is possible only if you are a child of God, forgiven and washed in the atoning blood of Jesus. Just like an earthly father speaks to his children, God likes to speak with his children directly and regularly. A father is not likely to send a message to his child through an intermediary unless the child is unavailable. Maybe he has traveled or is in school. Another reason a father may use an intermediary is if the child has been recalic Trent and unmanageable. The father now sends someone who he thinks the son will listen to. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
If we are available and obedient, God, our Heavenly Father, would like to speak to us, His children, directly every day. The question is, do we hear God every day? We will now consider the direct ways through which God, our Heavenly Dad, speaks.